Elhamdülillah, elhamdülillah, elhamdülillahi rabbil alemin. Ve salatu ve selamu ala Resulina Muhammedin ve ala alihi ve sahbihi ecmain. Nehmedullah Teala, ve nasafir ve şerhu en la ilahe illallah vahdehu la şerike lah. Ve şerhu enne seyyidina Muhammedin abduhu, habibuhu ve resuluh. Sallallahu aleyhi ve ala alihi ve zvacihi ve ashabi tabi khulafi raşid mahadim min ba'di. Ve zirahmeti ala tahkik. خصوصا منهم على ماته الله في الرسل على تحقيق أمر المؤمنين حضرة أبو بكر ومر سمان وعلي وعلى باقي الصحابة تابعين ودوان الله تعالى إليهم أجمعين يا أيها المؤمنون الحاضرون اتقوا الله تعالى وإن الله حمل الذين تقبل الذين هم محسنون الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على شرف الأمن المرسل سيدنا مولانا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين all praises are due to Allah, Lord of the universes. All praises are due to Allah who says in the Quran Kareem, Yawz Billah Min Shaitan Rajim Bismillah Rahman Rahim. O you who believe, be persistently standing firm for Allah as witnesses in justice, and do not let the hatred of a people prevent you from being just. Be just. For that is nearer to righteousness. Fear Allah. For verily Allah is aware of what you do. Sadaqallahalazim. May all peace and blessings be upon the Sultan of the Prophets, Sayyidina Muhammad wasalam, who said, If someone sends salawat to me 100 times on Friday, when the day of judgment comes, he will come with a light. And had that light been divided among all of creation, it would have been enough for them. 
May peace and blessings be upon him and upon his noble family and upon his blessed companions, especially upon the Fakhul Afa Rashidin, Hazrat Abu Bakr Siddiq, Hazrat Umar Farooq, Hazrat Osman Al Ghani, and Hazrat Ali Al Murtaza, and all those who follow them until the last day. May peace and blessings be upon the scholars of Taqwa and upon the righteous Awliya and upon the Mashaykh of the Naqshbandi order and upon the Khulafa and Sultans, especially upon the Ottoman Parishas and all those who follow and honor them until the last day. Amen. No believers, we must give thanks to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that He has created us Muslims. Because when we say that we are Muslims, we are connecting ourselves to a living tradition of over 1,000 years that comes from the Holy Prophet And in reality, a Muslim is the one who follows Islam, he is following the same divine teachings of all the Prophets which were perfected in the time of the Holy Prophet Islam is not a religion like other religions. Islam is not concerned only with one tribe or one nation. Islam is not concerned only with making people pray and to do rituals. Islam is not concerned only on giving people a spirituality. Islam is a religion that came to bring Allah's laws into the world and to establish those laws through a divine representative so that we may taste something of divinity. Every Prophet was representing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Holy Prophet wasalam, is the Rasul of Allah, the servant of Allah, the Habib of Allah. When the Holy Prophet wasalam, passed from this world, the divine representation, it did not pass with him. It continued with the men who are continuing the prophetic mission. It continued with the Khulafa Rashidin, and it continued with the Amirs, and it continued with the Sultans. This continuation is coming from the Ayat, from Surah Al-Nisa. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. O oh, you who believe, obey Allah, obey His Prophet, and obey your rightly guided leaders. Sadaq al Through this Ayat, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has ordered the Ummat to a divine protocol. And for 1,400 years, the Ummat was organizing itself and running to fulfill the obedience of Allah, the obedience of the Rasul and the obedience of the rightly guided leaders. Today's Muslims, they have put a poison inside of us. Instead of Samitna wa ta'na, we hear and we obey. This poison, since the fall of the Khilafat, is we hear, we question, maybe we obey. Intelligence, it is equated to asking, questioning, a doubt. This is not an Islamic issue. This is a Western issue. Because in the West, for over a thousand years, they say don't question anything. But in Islam, since the time of the Prophet wasalam, Allah is giving the divine wisdom and the divine knowledge and the Muslims have started asking about themselves and about their Lord and about this creation and everywhere they turn they want to see the face of Allah so this poison it continued and so we question not to look for the face of Allah. We question to put doubt so that we can say in this Ahir Zaman, Allah doesn't rule here. We began to question the ayats and the hadiths in our history. There is doubt there they are putting in us, especially the young ones. Whether there is even any uh, concept or reality of an Amir or a Khalifa or a Sultan in Islam. Can you imagine? But for 1400 years, this reality was not questioned, it was a part of Islam. And Muslims structured their society here and hereafter to support their righteous Sultan because they understood that supporting him was in reality supporting Allah and his Prophet. And for most of our history, one of the parts of the Ummats that was working to spread the obedience of Allah and his Prophet on the earth 
to spread the obedience of the Sultan on the face of the earth was the ulama, the scholars. Who is an alim? Holy Prophet was asked, who is the greatest alim? And he replied, the one who lives in greatest fear of Allah Most High. So the one who has knowledge, the greatest knowledge is the one who has the most fear of Allah. And in another hadith sharif he says, the ulama are the successors of the prophets. Verily the prophets do not pass on gold and silver coins, but rather they only pass on ilm and knowledge. When we look to the history of Islam, we see countless examples of scholars, of ulama. They are fitting into these descriptions. They were not proud of their knowledge. More knowledge they had, more fear of Allah was in them. Those were our role models, where they would even go against the kings who were against the teachings of the Prophet ﷺ, and they would rather be martyred or be tortured than to succumb to those wrong ideas. The alims, the ulamas, they were doing the work of the Prophet. They were standing up against to the tyrants. And they were carrying on the inheritance of the Prophet, which is to bring the obedience and submission to Allah in this world. We have examples in the four Imams of Fiqh, in the two Imams of Aqidah. We have examples in the great Imams like Imam al Ghazali, Imam al Nawawi, Imam Bayhaq. When we look at these Imams, when we look at the scholars of Islam, and this is just a tip of an iceberg. Regardless of their mashab or their teaching, they were all supporting first and foremost what is sent here to protect this world and to protect our spirit, the shariat, the shariat of Allah. And they were supporting the one who was representing that shariatullah, the shadow of Allah on the earth, the Khalifa. As Ali Sunnah wal Jamaat, we must look at our history, not only until the time of the four Imams. We must look at our most recent history. How they protected that Ahli Sunnah Akira for hundreds of years. How they protected the religion when the rest of Kufr was getting stronger and stronger and aiming to destroy. And when we look to just a few hundred years ago, we see the clear example of the Ottoman Empire and the example of the Osman the Ulama. We see the example of Sheikh Aksham Siddin, the teacher of Sultan Mehmet Fatihan. We see the example of Sheikh Abu Suwad Afhandi, the Sheikh al Islam in the time of Sultan Suleiman, the lawgiver. The West called him magnificent because all they could see was the glitter that he brought. But he was known in Islam as Kanun, Kanuni Sultan Suleiman, the one who brought the Shariat into a more perfect form in his time. What were these kinds of scholars? What were they doing? They were working together with the Sultan to bring the greatness of Islam. They were dealing with issues of the whole world, of technology, of rulership, of diplomacy, they were assisting the Sultan to institute the laws of Allah on the earth and to bring mercy and justice to the people and to establish the Haybat of Islam throughout the earth to bring justice to the world. They were working with the Sultan for the purpose of bringing itat, the obedience of Allah, into the world. The goal of the Sultan was Allah's rida, Allah's happiness. The goal of the ulama was Allah's happiness. And together they worked together to establish adalat, justice, into the world. And so the power of the state and the power of religion, the deen, they were together. And because they were together, the help of Allah was coming. They were pulling Allah's pleasure and fitting to the hadith when the Holy Prophet ﷺ said, Verily, those who were fair they will be upon pulpits of light in the presence of Allah, near the right hand of the merciful, the exalted, and both of his sides are equally honorable. They are those who practice justice in their rulings and with their families and in all they did.
So this was our condition for most of our history. And that justice from the top, it came down. And there was justice in societies and communities. There was justice in the families. And there was justice between races and between religions. There was justice in this world. There was justice in nature, in the earth and in the sky. There was not tyranny. When this was our condition, we see that Islam was in a state of honor. And the Muslims and mankind were in a state of honor. Something changed. We look at our present condition and we know something has changed. But do we study our history? No. The history of Islam is the last thing, if anything, that Muslims, believers are studying. We must study our history. And we see that the Sultan, he continued to work for Allah. The Sultans continued to shed their blood for Allah, to sacrifice, crying for the Ummah turning their hairs white, worrying about the Ummat. But the scholars, the scholars changed. The mission of the scholars changed. Instead of working with the Sultan to bring about obedience of Allah on the earth, they began to work against the Sultan and they began to desire the dunya. How were they tricked? How did they change so easy? The ulama, they had been warned of this danger for 1400 years. Because the nature of scholarship, the nature of knowledge is that if the person holding that knowledge, if he becomes proud, if that knowledge does not bring the fear of Allah, but that knowledge brings about arrogance. And because he is arrogant, he will not practice it and apply it to their life. And when that happens, they become corrupted. Hazrat Umar Farooq radiallahu an warned against this fitna when he said, if you see an alim who loves this world, then accuse him of abusing your religion because every lover swims in what he loves. And Imam al-Ghazali Karazasir said, the scholars of Ahirat are those who do not use their religion for worldly gains, nor sell the Ahirat for the dunya. Because he knows the honor of Ahirat, and he knows the dishonor of dunya. He who does not realize the enmity between dunya and Ahirat is not from the people of knowledge of Allah. Whoever knows this but does not practice it, it is the slave of shaitan because his desires have destroyed his soul and he is overcome by gaflet. And anyone following him perishes. Imam al-Ghazali is recording a conversation between Allah and Hazrat Daud salam. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Ya Daud, do you realize what I do to a scholar if he prefers his desires to my love? I deprive him of the pleasures of my address. Ya Daud, do not ask me about a scholar drunk with the world so that he could not turn you away from the path of my love. They are the robbers, the crooks, the criminals on the path of my servants. These warnings, they were given for a reason. And 100 years ago, we see that the scholars have become robbers. They have robbed the believers of their faith while wearing the jubas and turbans of authority. We see this especially beginning in the time of Sultan Abdul Hamid Han when it was a scholar who legalized the removal of Ulu Hakan, Sultan Abdul Hamid Han. The rebels within the government knew that they needed a fatwa to remove the Sultan, so they appointed a scholar, a Shaykh al Islam who made a fatwa against Sultan Abdul Hamid Han, making slanders and lies, saying, if the ruler of the Muslims tampers with and burns the sacred books and steals public money and kills the people and causes civil war and bloodshed, and if it is shown that by removing him there will be peace, and if the people in power think he should be removed, then our answer is, let it be done. This 
was a fatwa of an alim of the Shaykh al Islam. We now know if peace was the result of this removal. Now we now know whether we are getting the pleasure of Allah or not from this removal. This is a shameful action in the history of Islam and it separated the ulama from righteousness. Why was this done? How did the alims reach to such a position? That unfaithfulness to the ummat by the scholars did not end with that one act. It continued. Because the ulama they cannot function and they cannot properly hold their place in society in the absence of a halifa. They are pillars meant to support the dome of Islam. Without a dome to support, they stand useless. The righteous ones from the past told us what would happen when the real scholars they passed. Hazrat Abdullah ibn Abbas radiallahu anh, said, One alim after another will continue dying and traces of the truth will get wiped off until there will be a lot of ignorant people and the ulama will be gone. The people will then practice on their ignorance. They will adopt beliefs that are not on the path of truth and in this way they will go off the Sirat al-Mustaqim. The scholars of the Ahir Zaman is fitting to that description. And the Holy Prophet ﷺ gave a heavy warning about the scholars of this era, saying, A time will come to the people that only the name of Islam and the form of the Qur'an will remain. Masjids will be rich on the outside, but it will be empty, empty of salvation. Their scholars will be the most evil under the sky. Fitna comes from them and will go back to them. The Holy Prophet ﷺ, he did not speak from himself. Everything he said was inspired by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So why is he calling the Ahir Zaman scholars the most evil under the sky and saying they are the source and destination of fitna? Because they are not using their knowledge for haq. The scholars of Ahir Zaman, they are not inheriting from the tradition of the ulama who are the inheritors of the prophets. Instead, they are inheritors of the tradition of those who signed a fatwa against Sultan Abdul Hamid Han because they were tricked by the enemies of Islam. Because they were tricked by those ones who appealed to their arrogance and to their desire for dunya and their hatred of authority. And because of that, they themselves are not guided and they have no guidance to give. We can look at the situation ourselves. It is as if the ulama of today is saying that those who call for a hilafat, they are on the way of misguidance. It is as if they have made haram for the nation to call out for Allah to send the Khalifa. Are they calling for the Sultanate? Or at least saying to the people, we made a mistake and we should have love for the Khilafat in our heart? Or are they saying, just as the Shaykh al Islam from Sultan Abdul Hamid's time, there is no such thing as Khilafat in Islam? This is the scholars saying. The Sultans and the Khalifas, they were corrupt. We should be free, we should be liberal, we should follow the West, we should modernize, we should just apply the laws of Allah to ourselves and not worry about bringing justice in the world. We should not stand up for justice, we should not enjoin good, we should not forbid evil, everyone is free. Practice Islam to yourself and that is enough. But look at today's scholars and we can see that the answer is clear. We look at the behavior of today's scholars and we can see that it has nothing to do with the ulama of the past. Today, scholarship is a way for someone to gain a living, to gain recognition. And to gain a living, to gain recognition, you must please the people and you must be entertaining. Hazrat Ali Karamallah Wajha warned against this type of scholar saying, acquire knowledge. One, once you have gained it, protect it. Do not mix it with laughter or with playing, or else the heart will reject it.
When an alim laughs just once, he throws away a part of knowledge. Uh, today's scholars are going to be the doors. They're going to the doors of the tyrants for support. Not to the doors of the Khalifa or the Sultans of Allah. No, they're going to the doors of oppressors, to the doors of those who are killing and butchering the Muslims. And they are becoming allies with them. This kind of conduct, it leads to the greatest danger. The Holy Prophet said, whoever goes to the gates of the ruler will be put to trial. A servant does not move closer to the ruler except that he moves further away from Allah. And Hazrat Hudayfa ibn al-Yaman radiallahu an said, Beware of going to the places of fitna, the doors of the rulers. When you go to a ruler, you end up supporting his falsehood and saying what is not in your heart. The scholars of Ahir Zaman say that when they go to the rulers, they are like Musa salam, going to speak to Firaun. But what did Musa salam, say to Firaun? He said, Obey Allah, submit to Allah, and free the Bani Israel, and don't be a tyrant. When these scholars go to the rulers, are they speaking the truth to them? Or are they getting paid and being told that they are allowed to say and what they are allowed not to say? Scholars, the scholars of today, running, tripping over themselves. Muslims should not be fooled into thinking that the Ahir Zaman scholars who go to the bloody doors of the Zalims are the same as the Ottoman ulama who worked with the Ottoman padishahs. The Osman, the sultans, they were servants of Allah. The Osman, the sultans, they were shadows of Allah on earth. Their every action and every word had the intention of spreading shariat and justice on the face of the earth. Their nights were spent in sajda praying for the pleasure and acceptance of Allah. The Zalims of today, they are actively working against to Allah. They are like Nimrud, who declared himself the Lord of the earth. And they are aiming their weapons up to the sky, saying, we also want to be the Lord of the sky. They are butchering and they are massacring Muslims daily. They are giving medals and awards to non-Muslim presidents who become famous by slaughtering Muslims. They are making alliances with the enemies of Islam and selling the honor of the Muslims for their own advantage. And these are the people that the scholars are visiting today, who they are supporting today and who they are getting paid by today. That is why they are the worst creatures under Allah's sky. That is why we must stay away from them and from their fitna. So who do we follow? How does the Ali offend them? Is watch her. His advice for this time is reaching to us, saying, seek knowledge and you will be recognized by it. Practice it and you will be the best of its people. There will come a time when 90% of the people on earth, they will reject the truth. None will be saved in such a time, except for those who are unknown and unheard of. They are the Imams of guidance and the lamps of knowledge. Our Shaykh used to speak and opening this knowledge up from Hazrat Ali for years. And he's saying, if you see that scholar being praised, if you see that scholar appearing in news media, if you see that scholar being put up and supported by governments and ideologies, put a question mark there. Stay away from them. Our Shah is saying, the murshid is that one who knows when the road comes to a fork, or which way to turn. He sees the light going ahead, and the Holy Prophet والسلام, is holding that torch. Anyone who is following, they may go, inshallah, Rahman. The chain of scholarship, it broke. But the chain of the awliya is never broken. The friends of Allah who are receiving the knowledge, fresh and alive from the Prophet والسلام, they kept their support and their allegiance to the Sultan. 
And our Sheikh, Sahib al Saif, Sheikh Abdul Karim al Kabir, is Rabbani, is connecting us to that chain. And he's connecting us to Sultan al Awliya, Sheikh Maulana Muhammad Nazim Adil Haqqani, through 40 grand sheikhs. They are continuing the work of looking for the face of Allah and His happiness in this world. Those are the ones that we must follow in the Ahir Zaman. They are showing the ones who are showing the way back to Haq. They are the ones who, like Hazrat Ibn Arabi Qadal Sir, cannot be tempted by dunya because they have conquered it. As Hazrat Ibn Arabi said, I thanked Allah for having given me victory over my nafs. And I said, oh my ego, by the power of him who gave you a nature inclined to rebellion and made you vulnerable to all kinds of bad characteristics, I swear I will not leave you in peace until you live up to the teachings of the Book of Allah and the Sunnah of the Prophet This is the way of the friends of Allah and is the way of those who follow them. Find them and be in safety in this Ahir Zaman. Our goal must be to seek the pleasure of Allah. And once you find them, hold on to them very tightly because shaitan will not leave you alone. Mm -hmm. Your nafs will never leave you alone then. This dunya will continue to tempt you and your desires will continue to rebel. Hold on to them. They will tell you, you must ask, you must question and you must doubt. Get rid of that from the heart. Hold on tightly, purely to the jubba of our shaykh. And our shaykh is telling us in a simple and a clear and beautiful way, if we want to be with those ones, with the prophets, with the salihin and the righteous people, with the friends of Allah, with the martyrs, with the shuhada and the good ones, then we must obey Allah and His Prophet. And obedience to Allah and His Prophet is to obey those who are obeying them. Inshallah, we will live according to this. Inshallah. We will die according to this. We're asking our Lord to count us amongst those who obey Allah, the Prophet, and our rightly guided leader. We're asking to be counted as those who obey our Shaykh and to follow him into the path of safety, dunya and ahirat. We're asking Allah to forgive us and to guide the Ummah. Amin. Astaghfirullah. 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 La ilaha illa لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له له الملك له كل شيء قدير لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له الملك له لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له له الملك لا إله إلا أنت سبحانك من الصالحين لا إله إلا أنت سبحانك لا إله إلا أنت سبحانك سوق القدس نحن سوق القدس نحن إن دين الله الإسلام قام صلاة بسم الله الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر